Hey, so if you're a developer and you need to authenticate your user, i.e. they need to click that little Facebook button to get into your app or uh, maybe a Salesforce button or maybe a, a, an Active Directory or a single sign-on for the enterprise, how do you do that? Well, you can write it yourself and try to keep it maintained and all that. Or you can uh, rent a service like what we're going to hear about today called Authent uh, Auth0. And we're going to see it right now. Who are you? Hi, I'm John Gelsey. I'm the CEO of Auth0, a new identity as a service company. Very cool. And tell me something about you. So, uh, before Auth0, I was with Microsoft. I did acquisitions and strategy before that Intel Capital. But I really think of myself as a design engineer. I started my career as a chip designer and supercomputer architect for a company that was bought by Hewlett Packard. And who are you? I'm Eugenio Pace. I am one of the co-founders of Auth0. And uh, I started the company in 2013, a year ago. Before that, I, I was at Microsoft uh, doing solutions architecture. Very cool. So wh why do we need an authentication company, <laughs> you know, a company to do these little buttons that people use to sign in with their Facebook credentials, for instance? Excellent, excellent question. Uh, what it, com it comes down to, uh, de one, developer productivity, and two, security. So what's changed in the last couple of years is cloud. Enterprises in particular, well, of course everybody, but enterprises in particular have gone from seeing the cloud as this interesting experiment to embracing it as a, a mainstream enterprise resource, IT resource. Well, the problem with that, there's tremendous benefits, of course, productivity benefits from taking advantage of you know, services in the cloud, you know, data that's in the cloud, but there are security risks that come from that. There's complexity in developing applications to take advantage of those wonderful cloud services. In the old days, I could depend on my firewall. I had a defensive perimeter in my, in my enterprise, and I knew if, if I was inside that perimeter, I was safe. Or at least I was told I was safe. Yeah. Now, it's identity is the new firewall. My enterprise resources, my valuable enterprise data, is, or, um, or, or consumer data for that matter, is everywhere throughout the cloud. And I need to make sure that the uh, who or what is using that data uh, has access or has access to it is authenticated, so I can maintain security uh, for my for my application. A lot of people don't understand the implication of signing in with a Twitter or a Facebook or a, a Google, right? Um, I'm getting hack or uh, hack spam, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is really on Twitter. <laughs> I get a lot of DMs every day from people who have had accounts who've been hacked. Yes, and they're being hacked by a rogue app that they give permission to their Twitter account, yep. right? And a lot of the consumers just don't understand the consequences of saying, oh yeah, I give that thing uh, access to my Twitter. How do you help developers make sure that they, uh, that, that they don't get hacked? You know, like that, that's, uh, that's another great question. Actually, one of the uh, uh, pitfalls of security, of, uh, of implementing your own login, your own authentication uh, uh, mechanism, is that it's really easy to leave narrow gaps and those gaps are what the hackers exploit in order to take advantage and to take information from your application as, um, or to uh, uh, you know, convince users to enter information that they really, really shouldn't be. Yeah. So that's a, one of the, uh, you know, that's a great reason why you want to use an identity as a service, i.e. outsource to experts. You know, we obsess over identity. That's our 24 by 7 focus. Yeah. You know, why do it as a, as a hobby if you're an application developer? Why not focus on your business logic, what's really going to differentiate you in the market and drive revenue as opposed to reinventing the wheel? Yeah. And frankly, it, security, I should say identity, um, is it's, it's a, it's frankly, such an arcane subject. It's such a, a difficult thing to do right that it's something that a... Uh, uh, unless you have long experience and truly are an expert, you, it's, it's, it's not a good idea. It's a, not economically, it's just not a good idea to try to do it yourself. Yeah, and you guys don't just do the big, the big three or four, right? The Googles, the Facebooks, the Twitters. Uh, I think you said LinkedIn was popular. Yep. You do, how many different identity systems do you help a, a user log into? Uh, tens and tens. Uh, I think we're over 20 right now. Uh, and I say I think because we have a, we have a, a, this architecture that we've used, the system that we've used, is very extensible. 
So when we want to add a new identity provider, which we typically do when a customer comes to us and says, you know, I'm, I'm in Russia, and Google and Facebook are great for you Americans, but I use Vcontact, or my customers use Vcontact. We say, just a moment, come back, well, say 24 hours later. Although we've done it in as quickly as a couple of hours. Okay, fine. Now you have Vcontact as a identity provider, or Baidu, or Renren if you're in China, or uh, we had a, an Internet of, Internet of Things developer who said, you know, can, can I use Fitbit as my identity provider? Yeah, just a minute. <laughs> well, okay, give us a day. So um, we, we authenticate, well, we, we like to say, with all popular identity providers. Yeah. It's very easy because of our architecture to add new identity provider. So that number is going to continue to go up over time. With, with uh, enterprise, so consumer apps are pretty straightforward. You mm -hmm. add a Facebook button and let your users, you know, click Facebook and yep. boom, they're in your app, right? And that should be how it works for Absolutely. a consumer. On enterprise, though, like at Rackspace, I have a bunch of apps for the intranet, right? Yep. Only I have to VPN in first. <laughs> And so, one, on my iPhone, I often am not VPN in, so I, I often get a bad error. Of course. Um, it would be nice if an identity system did, called my VPN first and then got in. Um, and then there's all these other systems, Active Directory, Salesforce, on and on. Uh, do you deal with all the enterprise stuff? Absolutely. In fact, that's one of our, our strengths is that we don't, it doesn't matter what identity provider you're using. Uh, popular uh, enterprise identity provider like Active Directory or LDAP, uh, like any social provider. You could have a, a private database that your your enterprise has decided they're going to pull their credentials from. Doesn't matter. We handle all of them. Yeah. Uh, we can we can show perhaps in a demonstration later today um, the flexibility and strength we have where we could uh, start up a, a, a create authentication for an application from scratch and add. Pick a couple of uh, social providers, pick a couple of uh, uh, enterprise credential stores, and oh, okay, here's the proprietary database. That's uh, simple and straightforward. It's really, um, for, the, for the developer, for a st we'll, we'll say for a startup developer who wants to start by attracting consumers and then promote the capabilities of their applications through, uh, one, adding, uh, uh, accelerating the, uh, the acquisition of customers by having uh, social identity providers. That's one yeah. of the primary reasons for doing that. And then very easily transition when the enterprise says, you know, this is great. I've got a, you know, half my employees are using it. I want an enterprise account. Yeah. All of that is uh, something one can be configured in minutes with a system like ours. The reason I, on consumer that you're seeing these uh, Facebook buttons show mm -hmm. up is I bet the churn rate is really high. In other words, if you ask me to put a, another username and another password in, I am going to say, nah, I really don't want to use that secret app or whatever. Right? Exactly. But if you give me a Facebook button, click, I'm in the app, and now I get to play around without having to remember another stupid password, which nobody remembers yep. them anyways. Exactly. Every single click uh, loses customers, yeah. is, uh, creates customer abandonment. With a system like Auth0, there's fewer clicks, less customer abandonment. Yeah. So. On... on uh, some apps, uh, like my friend is building this system called Aitly, which is mm -hmm. going to have a consumer piece, which you sign in with Facebook or Twitter or Google or whatever. And then he's going to have a developer's piece, which is going to need access to, let's say, Rackspace Cloud or Amazon or something else, a back-end system. Can you do identity for both things as well? Absolutely. That's actually one of our specialties. Okay. Think of us as a hub. We uh, authenticate with any identity provider, we authenticate to any resource. So let's say, I'll, I'll make up not knowing much about your, your friend's application, but that he wants to, his consumer or enterprise users to come in. And then he wants to uh, authenticate with different Rackspace resources depending on the consumer or enterprise. Maybe with the enterprise contract, the, his uh, enterprise customers is going to pay for his Rackspace uh, storage or, or yeah. compute. We can, it's very easy to set up so that he authenticates with his Rackspace account to his the Rackspace, the enterprise user, to his Rackspace users. Then the consumer users are casual users. Now they're uh, the eight lease, uh, being billed to eight lease account. So that translation of identities and the roles that each identity has, the context that they're in, very easy to translate within our uh, within the Auth0 system. You can see as a developer how identity can go completely nuts pretty quickly. Yes. If you need to keep track of all this stuff and doing it yourself is not 
easy and, and like you said, is, is not really smart. How do you guys get paid? I, how much do you charge for uh, uh, putting your identity service into an app? Uh, we, have a, we have a pretty simple model. Uh, we, we charge, we scale our, our price and the number of users and the number of applications that are being used. Uh, can you give me a rough estimate? Oh, it it we, probably changes as, you know, if I'm building a work group app for 20 people, it's probably one price. Mm -hmm. If I'm building an Instagram, it's going to be a different thing, right? So we, of course, have you know, free developer or any developer can use this at, 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 at no cost. You know, once you move into production, we start at $19 uh, per, per month. Mm -hmm. for a small number of users, and then our, our highest uh, package right now is up to $499 a month for a, a medium-sized business. For the very largest customers uh, that might have, say, millions of social users, uh, we'll typically uh, analyze what their usage is going to be and then give them a give them a custom quote to make sure that it's economical for them. Very cool. We, we had a demo, right? I, so yes. what, what are you going to show me here? We do. So. Um, Auth0, as uh, John was explaining, it's a uh, kind of sits in between applications and resources and sources of identity. So we have that reflected in our dashboard. This is our uh, dashboard of our public service. Yeah. Uh, you have applications. Let's say you're building a Ruby on Rails app. So you tell us that you're doing that. Uh, you tell us the technology you're using, in this case Ruby. And what we do, what we will do is ask you how you want to authenticate users for this application. You're, you're going to use your own username and passwords, your social credentials or enterprise credentials. You can have full control on that. You can change this after your app. And you can change right? this anytime. Uh, so as, as we add news, we can. That's add. an interesting question. If I build an Apple app, you know, on the App Store, and I want I want to add some credential yep. capabilities, can I do that live, or do yep. I have to re no, push yeah. out the app? Uh, Once the app. you're connected to us, you all the, 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 the spectrum of identities that you want to accept can be fully controlled through a dashboard. The application never changes again. Very cool. So uh, in this case, uh, this is a Ruby on Rails uh, uh, tutorial. So we give you like the few lines of Ruby code that you need to, in to include in your application. Yeah. And we make it really, really simple. So we, we plug into whatever stack, uh, wh whatever the stack uses. And you know, Ruby, uh, developers in Ruby are familiar with OmniAuth as the, as the framework for identity. So we plug into that, it's very common. A uh, couple lines of Ruby and you're done, you get this. Very cool. One thing that I, I notice, developers do authentication two ways, pr particularly on first visit. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of them will have the Facebook button there, but they don't. They don't want you actually to use the Facebook on sign up. They want to. They want to yes. force you to put your email address and a real password. Yes. I hate that, by the way. I think that's the <laughs> bad way to do it. I want to just click Facebook and be in the app and yes. give it access, right? Do you have a choice? You can do both. You can do yeah. both or one or the other? Yeah. You can actually start with, yeah, actually, if you see in our default widget, you get both. You get all the buttons for the social providers. Yeah, the, the people who do it badly do usually yes. have both on the and sign up page. Both. And, and I click Facebook and then it doesn't do anything. Yeah. And it forces yeah. me to put the email address and password, no. which is stupid. I, but, by, I, I, I hear you. By default, if you click here on, the, on Facebook, or in this case on GitHub or Fitbit, we authenticate you there, and then you go back to the application. Right. And you're done. Right. You can opt to do other more sophisticated things, like you know, uh, something some of our customers are, are doing is linking accounts together. So yeah. you say, oh, I'm this guy in Facebook, and I'm this guy on Twitter, but I'm actually the same guy. Yeah. So being able to log into the application with either and then be the same person. Now, uh, at Rackspace, I, we use Workday, and I always have to be VPN in to use my Workday. Yeah. So uh, oh, can, do you guys give a nice error message if I'm not VPN, or, or can you do a click here to VPN in and then get, pass the credentials to Workday? Well, specifically with Workday, which is a SAML-enabled uh, app, you can actually do it without VPN, and we, we support that out of, out of the box. Okay. Uh, in fact, we, we have this cons we are very strong with developers, so you will see like a w very you know, rich SDK with all stacks, Android, iOS, ASP.NET, you know, Microsoft World, Ruby, Java, everything under the sun. But we also have this concept of configuration recipes for applications which are packaged applications, yeah. and you, know, you don't write uh, Salesforce, you don't write uh, Workday, but they are able to receive a security token. So in those cases, if you're using uh, Salesforce, let's say, uh, we will do the, exactly the same thing. Ask you how you want to authenticate. Likely, you are going to use 
the Active Directory, uh, um, uh, your Active Directory for that. Yeah. And then we'll give you like a detailed instructions on how to configure your instance of Workday with us or your instance of Salesforce with us. Can I customize the button? Like I, if, if for the Rackspace suite of apps that I have for employees, I'd love to have a Rackspace yes. button even though it's probably Active Directory or you know, sure. using Google even maybe. Uh, absolutely. absolutely. I mean, we have SharePoint servers or, that or we, both. and we have Exchange servers, right? And we have lots of stuff to sign the, into. The login widget, it's a, it's a JavaScript component. So it ships with a already fairly you know, nice to use a UI and look and feel. But because of you know everybody wants their own brand, their own you know background or, or what have you, you know it's a fully customizable experience. So we have customers that have like com it would be unrecognizable yeah. if you've seen it, but underneath it's our it's our code. Yeah. You know you know Robert, once we're done here, if uh, your IT guy has twenty minutes, we can set you up so you never have to VPN to use Workday mm -hmm. again. Awesome. <laughs> uh, it'll take us a little longer to do the really nice design that you're asking. Yeah. So that's you know, but for the for the the, the, yeah. the core capability, well, that's what we do right out of the box. Our focus is developers, but you know, being able to enable single sign-on popular third-party SaaS apps, that's just part of the package we offer. Yeah. We see the the, the big problem, the, the real pain point in the market today is developers developing these developing cloud applications. The single sign-on with Workday and such, that's that's the simple and straightforward part. Right. But of course we offer that because that's part of the foundation. So some of these apps are, you know, at, at Rackspace we offer Exchange hosting and SharePoint hosting mm -hmm. and then web hosting and, and, and cloud computing. Um, can I have a single button that'll sign you in to all that stuff? And that's probably through Active Directory, I would assume, or yeah. you know, does that even call in your Salesforce account? Can you use it to have a single button and get and have a single view into everything? Yeah, so you would configure each of these applications to us because obviously the way SharePoint accepts uh, your token, your security token, is different from Workday and different from uh, you know, Zendesk or whatever you guys use. Yeah. But once you have all of those connected to your instance of Auth0, then, and then you connect your Active Directory or your LDAP or whatever you're using for authenticating em employees to us, then you have single sign-on across all of this. Yeah, very cool. Uh, what else do you guys? So uh, this is the application side. We yeah. we also have the obviously the connections, which is the other side of the coin. So here's all the the social connect connections that we support, and we have a long list uh, yeah. of uh, you know everything popular out there. We, as John mentioned, we are you know, we have a very flexible architecture, so we can add new ones uh, very easily. Uh, one other thing that it's a uh, very um, pervasive in the identity world is that because there's so many moving parts, there's Workday, there's Active Directory, there's this and that, many things could go wrong. Yeah. And you know, troubleshooting an identity problem, it's a nightmare. You yeah. never know where the problem is. Is it Workday's fault? Is it your Active Directory's fault? Is it VPN fault? So throughout Auth0, you will see this try button everywhere. Yeah. in every single component, so you can actually test that this piece of the infrastructure is working fine, right? So you want to try how GitHub is authenticating, you click on try, and you're ready to go. Do you support all the new two-factor authentication methods as well? And do you error out properly if you don't have the right, so like the Twitter, I have two-factor authentication on Google, on Google and Twitter, Twitter and Facebook. And Those sometimes apps uh, yes. give me strange error messages because they just can't handle the, that two-factorness. So, so a, uh, that actually comes to a, a, a capability that we haven't even talked about yet that developers think of find really, really cool, which is what we call rules. It's, extensive, it's an extensibility. We are actually a platform that applications can be written on top of, the applications that are, are filters or that, can, that can engage with any stage of the authentication and authorization pipeline. So if I wanted to do a, a, a multi-factor authentication that was, uh, let me just pick a, a strange one just as an example. Um, gee, did, did Robert buy lunch at the company cafeteria yesterday? Yes or no? I just, that's going to be my second factor of authentication. So I pull into the company, uh, the, the, the database that says, you know, list of transactions in the cafeteria. You write a rule to do that. So I'm going to pull out, oh, look, yeah, Robert, yep, Robert. You know, I could say, how did, did Robert spend more than $10 in the cafeteria? Yeah could do an arbitrarily complex and therefore arbitrarily powerful multi-factor uh, authentication with this uh, uh, extensibility capability we have, which we call, as I said, we call rules. Yeah. 
it's kind of uh, probably do, the, go do you support all these weird RSA keys because we have those we have you know I have the Google authentication app that spits out a code and often my apps want to see that code right that's not something we're shipping today but it's in the, the roadmap for the very near term yeah uh, those are that's a, sort of a straightforward you, you, you can do it through our extensibility points right and yeah. you can buy the extensions to do that as, as uh, John was mentioning, but we have plans to make it even easier in the same way we connect with you know, any of these, and you say, I want LinkedIn, and I don't want to know, you, know, you can write like a, your own custom one, but yeah. LinkedIn is named as a you know, supply provider out of the box. We'll do the same with those. Cool. So, these are the, so these are the social ones. We, we also give you, like, a, you know, full control on the permissions, and, and what are you asking your customers? So, yeah. you know, like uh, Facebook is a really prolific, uh, you know, identity provider in terms of what are permissions you want to ask from the user. Yeah. Yeah. So you have all the yeah. flexibility to request, you know, I want to see. There's some tricks there, right? Uh, because if you ask for too much, a lot of users go, uh, Correct. this app was yes. just to, to, you know, like secret. You know, yes. Why exactly. would secret need to see all my likes yes. from exactly. Facebook? You know, yes. no, I don't want to give all my likes to this app. And that's so I'll just back out and stop and stop using the app. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's a best practice, in fact. You know, yeah. you know, requesting as as little as possible, and then as you grow in confidence or grow in the services that you're providing your your customers, you might request more. But you know, having a really constrained scope for for disclosure. It's a good practice, and we implement that. Right That's here. I, so I could have an app that only asks for a username and basic and, and credential at the beginning, and then if I hit a, a feature, yeah. they yeah. could come back and say, "Oh, Facebook needs more information. Do you give it pass? Uh, yes. you know, access to your likes Absolutely. or access to your birthday or something Absolutely. like that." Yeah. That's a simple In, and straightforward. It's as simple as coming here and say, "I'm using Facebook, and now I want birthday." So you click on birthday. And from there on, with the user consent, of course, the user will see, now this application is requesting you to disclose your birthday. And where's the same with Salesforce? or Where's the same with the each one? Authentication yeah. systems. Another common problem is that each of these uh, systems give you some information about the user. It gives you the name, your last name, your you know, email address, or whatever. But there's no consensus on the attributes. So one might give you family name, the other one will give you last name or surname. They all mean the same thing, but there's different attributes encoding that information. Yeah. So another value of, of zero is that we normalize everything that we get from the world into a common profile that you always code against. So if there's a last name, it's gonna always be last name, not family name or so and that's the hard work that you guys are doing underneath yes. to make sure you normalize the data coming right. from all these different providers. Exactly. exactly. It's the you know it's the database analogy. You could write your own database. You're a computer scientist. You know how to do that. Why would you when there's very good at third-party implementations? Yeah. Let let the experts who who do that every day focus on it. You focus on your business logic. Yeah. So, so who's so competitive with you guys? What, what's the competitive? Because I'm sure you're not the only. I I know of. Uh, Get our, uh, there's a bunch of them there's out a bunch, there. Yep, there's a, there's a bunch of people out there. I'd say the biggest differentiation between what we are offering now, what we've introduced to the market, and what everybody else has right now, is that we are a platform, an extensible, programmable platform, while they're a single purpose tool for, um, for identity. Uh, an analogy might be, um, uh, you and I are probably both, you know, remember the days as PCs were starting out. Do you remember the Wang word processor? I do, but nobody else will have to remember that. <laughs> I, I actually used one when I was a, was a kid. I had a friend. It was a great word processor. But, you know, it was basically, it was a PC. But all it did was word processing. And the Apple II and then the IBM PC stomped all over it because it was a single purpose tool. These others were platforms that were great word processors, but or excuse me, had applications that were great word processors, as well as did all sorts of other cool things, you know, games and calculators and such. We're a platform. We solve more than just today's identity problems. We solve today's identity problems simply, easily, out of the box. We're positioned to be able to solve tomorrow's identity problems um, simply and out of the box, with not only with features we're adding, but with all our programmability, this, you know, the simple JavaScript rules you write on top of our, our application. Uh, Did you have one last thing? Yeah, a couple of things. Uh, so, the, you know, the, just to complete on the on the connections, we, you know, we support all the enterprise, uh, as we mentioned before, but perhaps into the realm of the extensibility. 
you know, many, you know, very often customers have their own database or they have like a custom, completely custom thing, a mainframe, you know, where, where users are authenticating. So um, with us, you can provision um, a new repository of users right away by saying, you know, give me a, a user store uh, and that's it. And then you can click on, the same way you can click try and test things, you can also click in, mo in most cases on customize. And so in this case, you get like this, uh, I want to use my own database or my own uh, repository. Yeah. And in those cases, what we open is a, it's a code editor. So this is JavaScript. You tell us what the login function should do, uh, what the create function should do, the verify user should do, change password should do, and that's your code. You know, we run it for you, but it, it actually is your code. So you can go and let's say you have a, a complex access control rule, or you have like a, a, you know a, a rich profile that nobody else is capturing with additional information. So all you need to do is it's a database and you're using MySQL, and you have the nickname, email, and password. You have a zip code there, and that's all you need to do. And yeah. that's very very easy. So we lower the bar of entry. So back to the extensibility. Weird customers are doing today things that we never designed of zero to do. Yeah. It's like we never imagined what these guys are doing. And that's, I think, the biggest differentiation that we have. It doesn't ha having everybody in the world using one authentication provider open up security problems? Because if you guys get hacked, everybody's going to get hacked, right? So I mean, we saw Target get hacked, right? And all yes. of a sudden, all these credit cards get stolen. You know, if Target was using an identity broker like us, they might have had fewer problems. <laughs> we don't know. We don't know these specific details. But that's what it sounds like. So remember, we're an identity broker. So there's identity providers, the, the Google or the Twitter or the Active Directory implementation set of Rackspace. Those are the entities that are, those are the, the sources of trust that are actually doing the authentication. Yeah. We're the broker that brings, brings, that, um, uh, brings them up so you can provide to Google or Facebook or to Active Directory what your credentials are. We also, because we're a platform, we can put elements around it for additional factors of authentication. Uh, I'm going to log in with my Active Directory credentials, but I'm also going to uh, uh, check to see if uh, John is still in this uh, special access control list that my compliance group has uh, created that you know, changes just due to strange, uh, strange uh, you know, legacy requirements once an hour. I can, I can do those sorts of things very easily with a system like us. Yeah. And you can use two-factor authentication. So I you know, if I'm putting in a exactly. code, I, I, I'm pretty sure I have my phone. So exactly, even yes. if you guys are hacked and watching passwords or uh, credentials getting passed back and forth, uh, that, yep. that's a good way to really secure things. That's why I love two-factor authentication so deeply. Yeah. I, it's mm. really hard to use. And for users, my dad just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. why, why do I need to put in a code every time I want to sign in on something? Yeah. But, you well, know, that's how you stay state. It's safe. how you stay secure. And we actually, I mean, one of the, 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 the benefits of a system like us that makes you more secure is that we actually can allow you to do n-factor authentication. So many, many factors of authentication. It all depends on what kind of relationship you need to have with your users. Uh, you could have sort of biometric things like typing cadence you know, along with the the authenticator code, along with an RSA key, along with a retina scan, it, it, it sort of, it, it's, uh, the, the possibilities are endless, all depending on the level of security that you need to keep your, your business and application secure. We, yeah. we can support it. Tell me a little bit about the company, how are you guys funded, and uh, how many people are working there? We're nine people right now. Uh, probably the majority are, are engineers. Uh, we launched our, or started shipping the product in March of, of last year. We started generating revenue from the product in the, the middle of last year. Uh, we've been really pleased with the market reception. We have uh, users, uh, I should say subscribers, um, that are um, uh, both in our, our free model as they're trying it out, or their small applications, their pay, in our paying model where they uh, you know, want to, to take advantage of you know, large numbers of users who support. Um, and then all the way up to large multi-billion dollar enterprises who've replaced um, you know, uh, a big portion of their identity infrastructure with Auth0. Um, so we've, uh, we were bootstrapped all last year through the, the revenue that we were generating. And we've actually just launched in the last few weeks a, a seed round. We're raising a million dollar seed and we're about two thirds of the way uh, of, of that uh, actually uh, in the bank.
Very cool. So, yeah. Well, congrats. Where do we learn more about it? www.auth0, A-U-T-H-0.com. It's the number zero. It's the number zero, not the letter. No, don't spell it out. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, thank you so much for coming thank in and you, talking Robert. to me about this new world because it's uh, really an important world that every developer needs to think about. They do. Thanks.